So I would like to now begin with uh, talking about the art of type this year. Um, ink and Clay 45, a Sapphire anniversary, we just thought it was an opportunity to do something different and to kind of push the boundaries of what ink and clay artists can do. We sent out about three years ago, we began sending out um, the ink and clay art of type e-blast, letting all of previous participants and a lot of arts institutions know about what we were doing here. So uh, we invited artists who work in ink and clay or combinations thereof to not only participate in ink and clay this year, but to do it with the theme of including typography, lettering, text, writing, language, symbology in their work. I had been seeing for many years now, I've been here for almost eight years, and um, I've seen for, from the very beginning the use of type in ink and clay. Um, certain artists just gravitate towards that. And I wanted to challenge those who aren't as used to using text in their work while also giving those who do use text an opportunity to shine. Um, so that was the idea of this advent of this theme this year. We may or may not do themes in the future. I want people's feedback to know um, about that. But we just thought that this was important, not just for all of us, you know, as artists to grow and as curators um, to find new uh, ways of expression or new works that explore the use of text, but also because we do have a university, a, poly, a polytechnic university, where our uh, visual communication design majors are all working with type all the time um, as part of our fine arts program. And so, uh, you know, it is good for our students to see professional artists working with typography as a way of inspiration, as a way of teaching, a way of educating, showing the possibilities to students of what the art of type can be as applied to the visual language of fine arts. Um, so the entry, the statistics that I try to usually do at our talk uh, each year when we're in person, I usually tell, tell you in person what some of these numbers are. So here they are in, in writing. Um, we had uh, 274 entries this year, um, 98 of which were clay. Uh, 144 were ink, and I understand why there's quite a difference there, and that's probably because it's more likely to be able to use type and typography with uh, ink work, maybe a little bit more common than with clay, although you'd be surprised we did have 98 entries in clay that included type, and um, we're going to show uh, and honor those today, both ink and clay and combination. You can see that we're now starting to see more and more of a combination of ink and clay being used. Um, at first, uh, eight years ago, I think there was only one or two artists combining. And now, you know, we've got, we've got so many more. Um, in the end, the, ent the number of entrants were 156 artists, um, 43 of which were uh, using clay and uh, 65 ink. Sometimes that's double counted because if there's an artist that you've used clay only in one work and ink only in another, then they might be counted twice here. Um, or also in combination, the same goes. Um, the selected entries that you're gonna see today were 100. We thought we might be somewhere around 75 when I told the jurors to um, make their decisions, but we ended up being able to include all uh, 100. Um, we did have a wait list this year, which is new. Um, we did select 75 artists um, because that's what um, the jurors and I discussed, but then found that there was a room for 25 additional pieces that were, um, were, were scored well, but just hadn't reached that, that uh, highest point. So, but we wanted to include them because we had the space and they were, they were works that deserved consideration and to be included. Um, you will see here that there were our uh, 36 completely clay pieces there or mixed media with, with clay. Um, there's ink uh, based work, there's 49 and a combination of 15. Um, and there are, there are 24 clay artists, uh, 35 ink um, using ink and nine that use the combination. Um, 
the total number of artists selected were 66 out of a total of 110 artists that had um, ultimately been selected. And I also don't mind hearing oohs and ahs as we go through this because it is pretty <laughs> spectacular. And I think it deserves not just the artwork, but also the virtual ex exhibition itself. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mention Molly O'Connor here, um, architecture major who uh, worked on, on this virtual exhibition. But please know that it was a collaborative effort. Every student participated in creating uh, the virtual objects for these. Everyone was assigned a certain number to do and had to create the, the artwork um, themselves. So we're greeted by um, Andra uh, Brockoshen's work uh, here. The outdoor sculpture um, had been previously exhibited. Um, is Andra here? Would you like to speak about your work? But of course, if somebody causes trouble, it doesn't sound like Andra is here. So we're just going to go ahead and go on in to the galleries. All right. Um, all right. You can see we're greeted by Mark, Mark Hendrickson's uh, vases that he dedicated to Ink and Clay this year, Ink and Clay 45. Is Mark here? So we're going to take a little turn. I believe. I'm sorry, but turn a little bit. Mm -hmm. there's a, it looks like we have an empty stand, but that's not the case. It's just because part of the virtual experience, it's a little harder to see three-dimensional pieces. We have to do them at different angles, which should appear here. All right, so this is Shaheen. I know Shaheen is here because I saw her earlier. Earlier, Shaheen, would you like to talk about your work while I stroll around it as best as I can, get better views of it? Just have to unmute yourself and go ahead and say a few words, Shaheen. Maybe she's shy or maybe she got lost or we lost her somehow. So I apologize for that. This is maybe a better view. Mm. Right, so we'll move on. Um, if Shaheen comes back, we do have other works by Shaheen in the show. So maybe she'll come back. All right, so I think we can go to Jane um, Pelicciotto, my little bit of Italian. I, I do speak <laughs> Italian, but I want to make sure I'm pronouncing it. You said that, you said that perfectly. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Why don't you go ahead and say a few uh, words about your work? Oh, um, it's, so, it's so funny to see them, them there, and I'm going to have to figure out a clever solution for the physical show. Um, well, we have jewelry mounts that we can use. We okay, have I have some ideas too, and we can talk about that. We have a whole year. <laughs> um, yeah, well, well, we can talk about probably next summer when we get Yeah, closer. I mean, exactly. Um, no, I mean, it's exciting. I was really thrilled to see this. This um, exhibition came on my radar really, really late, like literally a few days before the um, call for entry. So I had two of the pieces done, and then I made a new one um, for the show. So, I mean, thank you to the jurors and everybody. I was, I was really thrilled to um, have these pieces in there. Well, we're, um, thr we're, thr we're thrilled also to have the diversity of media represented. You know, I'm excited when I see something unique and different. So, uh, oh, well, thank you so much. I was already working on the typography pieces. This is polymer clay for those of you who don't know. Um, and then the piece that's showing in the image there was the one I did specifically for this. Um, based on a photograph I took from the, um, um, the um, uh, cathedral in Trastevere in, in um, Rome, and then applied it to polymer clay in this sort of like, you know, archways that you see in a lot of the, the um, churches there. So anyway, thank you for including me. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, it was uh, the jurors, of course. And here's a little bit more of an aerial view that we can get. Um, so um, these are brooches and- um, Yeah, and then one of them is a necklace. This yeah. one is the charm. That, that one's a necklace, yeah. Okay, great. All right, well, thank you. Thank you for also being here. For yeah, no problem. The show. Um, all right, and it is Ryan here. Um, Ryan Hennessy. I know Ryan participates pretty regularly and he has two pieces in the show, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, 
this is an installation, sculptural installation piece. Um, is he here to speak about his work? Well, let's move on. Um, I believe this is also Andra Brokelshen who is outside. Did she come in? Okay. Using um, uh, religious uh, book pages um, in the background. And this is something she's been doing for a while now. We saw previous work of hers. Um, and then combining it with a modern day uh, little black dress that's, you know, known as what every woman needs to have, um, <laughs> which is also questionable, I guess. <laughs> um, okay. Um, and then, you know, one thing to say about three-dimensional work in this virtual reality, you know, the, um, the 3D component of digital uh, technology is, is a little challenging when it comes to these virtual exhibitions. Um, you know, you, that's why we had include the photographs uh, that the artist uh, provided in order to be able to really see what the true work looks like because the virtual exhibition doesn't necessarily give 3D work uh, true justice. We do our best, but unfortunately, unless you were to do a 3D scan of every single sculptural piece in the show, we would not be able to really get the true feeling of what a 3D work looks like. Um, but by including these pop-ups, by being able to, um, to show you the photograph, the enlarged image, we're hoping that it still gives you a good feeling about like, what the actual work looks like. I believe Susan um, Sidebottom is here today. Would you like to talk about your work? We do have one more piece in another part of the show that we'll get to mm -hmm. as well. Um, first of all, it's very interesting seeing them very flat. <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> because they aren't at all. Um, my work is porcelain clay. Um, all of the pieces are hand built. Um, they have a lot of textures. I love putting type on images. Um, they are, of course, Trump boy trying to make you think that they are real and they are not. So the closer I come to that, the more successful I think I am. Um, I do enjoy taking pieces of things and putting combinations together. Sometimes things that might appear together, sometimes not, but certainly to evoke some memories that you've had in the past of things. Okay. So I appreciate being invited for, to the show. Okay. Well, thank you uh, also for being here, for saying a few words about your work. Mm -hmm. Did somebody have a comment? I'm sorry, I heard a voice. Incredible. Uh, thank, see, <laughs> this is what we want. We do want, you know, the problem with doing things this way is that people are shy and afraid to speak. That's why I want you to feel like you can speak out and say a word, you know, you don't just have to talk. We don't just have to hear the artists and, and hear my voice. We can you know, we can applaud what we like. And I think that this is a great opportunity when we when we can't be here in person to talk to each other about our work, why not be able to express it here in this format. So, of course, you know, everybody go ahead and speak up if you have something positive you want to say or or a comment or if you would also like to, um, you know, ask a question. Now's the time to talk to the artists and the all, rest of us can get more out of it. I, I just want to say that when you first showed those, I was like, oh, yeah, somebody just put a, a book and, and some paint and a brush there. That's cool. And then when <laughs> it was porcelain, I was like, oh, no. We're That's talking of, about Susan Sidebottoms. Yeah, pieces. yeah. Okay, right. Yes, exactly. Yeah, when you showed the picture of it, and then I heard it, it was porcelain, it was yeah. like, wow. Wait, yeah. Wait. I believe it, clay, clay paper is part of Porcelain, no, it's porcelain not, clay. Okay. It's not, uh, it is not used. I do not use paper clay. This is made by traditional means with, wow. hand with okay. porcelain That's... clay and putting um, textures on. And I will tell you the, and the other thing is that if you're not familiar with clay, the clay I'm using shrinks 14%. So to oh. get to the exact size, I'm having to make it 14% larger. Wow. Um, wow. It's wow. firing. Um, the pencil actually is from an extruder, but I had to have a, um, 
I'll have metal shop make the extruder piece for me. So it would be the actual size of a pencil when it was fired the final time. That's impressive. That's so yeah, that's good. To, those are things I wish I had known <laughs> before. <laughs> those are the sorts of things to put in your artist statement. I'm going to give everyone some advice here. Okay. You know, when you are doing a technique yeah. or a process that's unique and different, it's important for us to know about it. And it's important for the jurors to know that too. It's your only opportunity to tell them that. Um, so, you know, this is wonderful, Susan. I think that that really gives us, um, gives us a, a better idea of what it takes. So very, very well done. Thank very you. well done. Thank you for telling it, for telling, yeah, sharing great. that part. And mm -hmm. thank you for the positive comment from Monica that brought that about. That's exactly the type of nice conversation that we can have. Mm -hmm. Should we go ahead and let Bob in? I don't know who Bob is, but let's be prepared if he's a problem person or maybe he's perfectly <laughs> innocent. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, part of the problem is a lot of people have had trouble with locating the uh, password for entering a, one of these things. So I made it more public and that's why people are getting in here. That shouldn't be in, but um, okay. So uh, Marie, you're, you're here today, I believe, yes? Okay, uh, about this piece, it's called In Vino Veritas, and I'm sure most of you know that it means uh, sweet in the wine. And this piece went through kind of evolution. Uh, originally, the idea was to have it set up like bowling pins with the head of a certain politician as a bowling ball. And by the time we got to this show, uh, we have new administration, but I still kind of like the idea of uh, the truth, uh, there being, of there being alternate facts and all sorts of interpretation. So I decided to arrange the battles as uh, 99 battles on the wall, but unfortunately I didn't send in the picture of the shreds below. So I'm sorry. But uh -huh. and also I put in a wrong artist statement, but basically this is, uh, statements from uh, about truth from different famous uh, people and thinkers and arranged as 99 battles on the wall. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> oh, how interesting. So it is intended to be like a large scale installation at some point. Is your plan for the future? Uh, I don't think I will that my attention will hold for the whole 99 battles <laughs> because many of them have been broken in the past uh, few years so we yeah, have okay. that and we have more of those statements in my other piece so okay yes which we also found uh very interesting so we'll get to that as well which is i believe in the same room um okay so we're just going to go around the room and then you know, um, if I miss anyone, please let me know. I'm trying my best. Um, is a uh, seltzer here on a seltzer? I believe if I remember correctly, lives in Las Vegas. Not sure. Okay. All right. So um, we'll move on. Ting Wang, is Ting Wang here? Ooh. Oh. This is a piece, I believe, where the, um, let me see what it says. Uh, right, so it was about re-imaging the form, the, the typography into, um, uh, into sort of a computer language. All right, so let's move on. I believe that Sarah, Brian? Hi, Sarah, can you hear me? Hi. Yes, hi. yes. Um, thank you so much for all the work you did to put this very complicated show together, first of all. Um, I just want to, I'll be brief, <laughs> um, and uh, I want to, I have a, a, maybe three works in the show, and this one is collaborative, so I wanted to call attention to the fact that this is a project I made with four other artists, and we work together to make books under the name Ship with Bob. So I, I'm not good on the fly. So I'm just gonna read our, <laughs> read our statement. No um, problem. No I'm problem. just staying muted because I have a six year old who could come in at any minute and cause a big problem for everybody. So I'm gonna keep it brief. No worries. Um, so this project is called Ref. 
and REF is an investigation into the erosion of physical reference area of the library and the fundamental shift taking place in the way we ask and answer questions. Mm -hmm. Reference sources evolved over hundreds of years to specifically or to answer specific types of questions that have emerged over time as we have sought to engage with information. Atlases, chronologies, encyclopedias, directories, and other related reference types each satisfied a particular method of seeking information. We've moved away from the use of these reference materials toward keyword searches and algorithmic relevance. And as a result, we're able to access information with great speed, but are losing the aspect of translation that enabled us to seek nuanced answers to carefully posed questions. So the five artists, we work together to create a reference section. We worked collaboratively to addition 15 components um, that you can see here, all of them um, dealing with the idea of the kind of the loss of the physical reference area. Um, and to kind of bind the project together, we selected a set of dates that are related to that transition. So dates that kind of related to the history of libraries and the change that we, we've all um, seen. So that's a very so long and hopefully clearish statement. <laughs> it's so interesting because, you know, every time we, you know, one of our galleries is inside the library, the Huntley Gallery mm -hmm. is inside the library next to special collections on the fourth floor. And every time we go in there, I see less and less books and yeah. more and more and more computer stations. Yeah, I'll say um, one like, thing just super quickly about it, if you don't mind, and that's that I teach in a library school too, as a okay. book artist. And the library that I teach in while I was working on this project completely removed the reference section from under my fingers while I was using it to research the project. So it's kind of a Oh, wow. Story. Yeah. It's crazy. Right out from under your fingers, you're literally yes. using it and they took it away from you at that. They wow. Yeah. That's, they didn't even let you finish using this. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's I, kind Sarah, of, where are you? I'm in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I teach for the University of Alabama. Um, oh, book yeah. Program, so, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. This is an incredible project. I mean, it's mm -hmm. something that we probably all think about so often. Who else was part of your group? Of, so um, the the women, it's five of five of us, five women. Uh, one is based in California, actually, in um, Petaluma. Macy Chadwick runs In Cahoots uh, re uh, Residency, which is a really wonderful artist residency that everybody should check out. Um, Katie Baldwin is currently in Taiwan on a Fulbright. Uh, she's a woodblock printer and she teaches at University of Alabama Huntsville. Trisha Tracy is a designer who teaches printmaking for Dartmouth and um, Denise Bookwalter teaches printmaking at FSU. So those oh, are all three. female as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> that's great, <laughs> wonderful. One of the things I, I really miss the physicality of, of libraries now and I, I'm so glad you're doing this because, um, you know, the, the thing that's missing is um, uh, coming across things you never expected. I yes. used to cruise uh, libraries. I used to go like in the art section and just cruise up and down the books and come across somebody I never heard of. And I could like, then I could follow through on that. And these things are getting lost. I, yeah, they, right. It's almost as though when you do a search, it's so limited to what you're exactly searching for that you don't get those little little things that just pop up unexpectedly that you would have that make you stop and look at that you wouldn't have done before. So joyful side side uh, whatever. And also just the feeling of a book and the touching of a mm -hmm. book and being able to jump around yeah. pages and and just. You know, th those are the things that I, I think that, you know, we may be losing if we don't, you know, keep to pr keep promoting the book arts. And I know there's several people in our faculty that are, are uh, book artists or uh, that I know that that are very interested in keeping that tradition alive. And a lot of the students, too, in VCD and visual communication design are take classes to learn bookmaking. And so it's just nice to see that we do see some of that. And then we do, just speaking of book arts, we do have our next show at the Huntley in October, opening October 17th. Um, again, this is a, the gallery that's on the fourth floor of the library next to Special Collections. We have a show called La Biblioteca, and it is artist book, books from artists, book artists of Los Angeles and Italy. Um, we, we have some books being couried, couriered from Italy during the pandemic. <laughs> um, that uh, are here in the United States that we're gonna be exhibiting alongside LA-based artists that are also book artists. 
And so uh, come and join us if you're here locally, October 17th <laughs> will be the opening um, from uh, 2 to 4 p.m. Glad I could get that little plug in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, what you'll see here with Sarah's piece is also there's a video um, that she provided along with it, which is extremely helpful and is, is totally allowable uh, to include. We, we encourage that if you do have work that is interactive like this. And you can see that she has a narrated um, video. REF is an investigation into the erosion of the physical reference area of the library and the fundamental shift taking place in the way we ask and answer questions. This project was produced in 2019 by the members of Shift Lab, Katie Baldwin, Denise Bookwalter, Sarah Bryant, Macy Chadwick, and Tricia Tracy. Reference sources evolved over hundreds of years to answer specific types of questions that have emerged over time as we have sought to engage with information. Atlases, chronologies, encyclopedias, directories, and other related reference types each satisfied a particular method of seeking information. When? Where? Who was responsible? What else was happening during this time? How was this accomplished? We have moved away from the use of these resources toward the use of keyword searches. As a result, we are able to access information with great speed, but are losing the aspect of translation that enabled us to seek nuanced answers to carefully posed questions. For this artist book project, five artists worked together to produce a complete reference section. Fifteen components, each inspired by a traditional reference type, are housed together in a custom flip-top document box. As an organizing principle for the project, artists selected a set of dates related to the shift away from the use of physical reference texts toward our reliance on algorithmic relevance. 1963, the publication of Automation in the Library of Congress, also known as the King Report. 1991, the High Performance Computing Act, also known as the Gore Bill, and the advent of the World Wide Web. 1993, the publication of Planning Second Generation Automated Library Systems and the release of Mosaic, the first web browser which popularized the World Wide Web, and 2001, the release of Wikipedia. This project includes the following components. The King Letter, a facsimile of a letter which accompanied the King Report, laser printed on onion skin paper enclosed in a manila folder with a letterpress printed label. Almanac. An almanac is a one volume work with statistics or a compilation of specific facts. Language from the farmer's almanac, best days, and the king report is paired with the length of days for the first day of each month in 1963, printed from Balmer metal type on zircle book paper and buckram. Atlas. An atlas is a book of maps and geographical information. Imagery for this atlas was inspired by Wind Map by artists Fernanda Viegas and Martin Wattenberg. Symbols printed in the margin refer to the Gazetteer, which includes language from the BBC shipping forecast, printed from reduction linoleum on zircal book paper with Bugra covers. The image on the front cover of the atlas and Gazetteer comes from the 1963 Sky Almanac. Gazetteer. A gazetteer is a geographical directory used in conjunction with a map or atlas. This broadside sits in the pocket of the atlas. It is a transcription of the BBC shipping forecast as a storm brews and corresponds to particular points within the atlas's wind map. Bibliography. A bibliography is a compilation of sources of information or a book that provides literature on a specific subject or by a specific author. A list of sources for ref interspersed with images of our mothers. Text is set in Balmer and letterpress printed from metal type on Mohawk superfine paper. Photographic images are laser printed. Biographical Dictionary 
A biographical dictionary is a source of summarized information about the lives of people. An invitation to submit to Who's Who in America, a biographical dictionary first published in 1899 and now in its 71st edition in 2018. The envelope contains a letter from Ref and a reproduction digitized by Google of the preface from the first edition, laser printed on parched stone French paper in an envelope. Chronology. A chronology lists events in order of the date on which they occur. A selected chronology of library technology showing the development from the first card catalogs through the widespread use of WorldCat includes the significant dates for the REF project, printed with linoleum block and polymer plates on Reeves heavyweight paper. The timeline includes markers for shift lab members' births and life events. There's a key in the back. The center spread includes text about time from the concordance. Concordance. A concordance is an alphabetical listing of keywords or phrases found in the work of an author or work in a collection of writings. A concordance of text from shift lab members' writings on their process of making. Concordance words include make, work, time, hand, and print. The storage book format can be extended out to show keywords on the margins of every page, printed using polymer plates on Bugra and Strathmore cover paper. Dictionary. A dictionary is a resource that lists words in alphabetical order and gives their meaning. The dictionary lists words that were entered into Merriam-Webster's Dictionary in 1963, 1991, 1993, and 2001. A selection of these words are used in sentences. This book is a resource and reflection about society at a particular place and time, and the way in which language is influenced. This book is a double pamphlet with a buckram cover. The text is letterpress printed, and the imagery is screen printed on Reeves Lightweight and Kitty Directory. A directory is a book listing individuals alphabetically with details such as names, addresses, and telephone numbers. This is a small accordion book with an alphabetical listing of Harold Edmonton, Merrill Flood, Gilbert King, Manfred Cohn, Richard Libby, Don Swanson, Alexander Willey, who signed the King Report in 1963. The book is letterpress printed on Reeves Lightweight. Encyclopedia. An encyclopedia covers knowledge or branches of knowledge in a comprehensive but summary fashion. Encyclopedias contain vast amounts of information arranged alphabetically. The book or set of books is intended to be read in sections, but rarely from beginning to end. Here, selections scanned from the first edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica from 1771 were layered and etched onto a laser-cut plexiglass plate. The plate was printed and scanned again. The resulting image was enlarged and digitally printed onto a yard of fabric. Guidebook. A guidebook includes information about a place and is designed to be used by visitors. In this book, color is used to lead a person through the stacks to locate a particular journal. This guidebook contains samples of Buckram that corresponds to various titles from the discarded Buckram journals from the University of Alabama Huntsville Salmon Library. Handbook. A handbook contains information about a subject or instruction about how to use or do something. This handbook is a compilation drawn from four handbooks found in the M. Lewis Salmon Library at the University of Alabama Huntsville. Each of the handbooks used were published in key years of the REF project, 1963, 1991, 1993, 2001. The pamphlet book is letterpress printed on French paper.
index. An index is a measure of something. This collection contains the entire text along with a selection of imagery from research used during the making of REF. One copy was risograph printed on color plan gray paper, then reproduced digitally for the edition. Manual. A manual is a specific work that details how to do something. This manual includes laser printed images of hands working, including images of sewing, writing, typing, setting type, and folding. Pamphlet binding, UV Ultra, and Arturo cover papers. Yearbook. A yearbook is an annual publication reflecting on the events of the previous year. The 1990 Eugenian was the first yearbook on CD-ROM. The yearbook here is a reproduction of that CD-ROM with laser printed label and letterpress envelope.